for Java code? And the answer is yes. Um, in fact, our tools are also for, for Java code on the static side of things. And there's uh, dynamic tools are a little bit different in the, in the Java realm just because the typical memory type problems that you know, the tools we talked about today you know, that you would use to go after are a little bit different, right? You don't have the same kind of array out of bounds problems in essence because the Java, you know, the VM and the way the bytecodes are, are uh, compiled and, and executed, it is your runtime tool, right? It's doing that out of bounds checking for you and it will throw an exception for you when you, you hit something out of bounds. And it, resource leaks are a little bit different. Yes, there's garbage collection and that doesn't hit all of your resources in Java, but it also means that the runtime tool isn't going to tell you if you forgot to close a file handle or something like that. Ah, here's a question. How can you spot false positives when using a static tool? Do you need to execute the code? The answer is no. And, and a part of this has to do with um, what exactly comes out of the tool, as I mentioned. How are the results presented to you? Uh, spotting a false positive means seeing what the analysis reported and walking through the code yourself and deciding whether or not it's correct in everything it says. So in particular with our solution, we try to tell you everything we can out of the out of the analysis. All the key events that led us to believe that there was a problem, the functions that were called that were involved, the path decisions that were made, it was you know true on this particular condition, false on that particular condition. And we show this all to you in an interface so that makes it very easy to walk through the code and see exactly what the analysis was thinking. You don't execute the code to do that, but you kind of do a mental simulation of what would happen. And if you decide that the analysis is incorrect at any step in the way, well, chances are that's, that's what a, a false positive is. How does Covary compare to Gimple's PC lint? And I think, um, while I'm not exactly familiar with all the nuances of, of Gimple's particular PC lint, and all the warnings it provide. I think the general rule about PC lint is that it's, or, or lint in general, is it has a voluminous amount of warnings. You have to do a lot of, of configuration to kind of pare that down to the list that you really want to see. Um, and the, the false positive rate is high because of that. Uh, it's, it's more difficult to integrate into your system. It doesn't do anything with build integration. It's not trying to understand what's happening in the build to put your software together. And so it's limited in the scope in terms of what it can do across files, across functions um, as well. How does Covary fit into embedded software development? In other words, how tightly is a tool tied to a particular compiler? Um, so the embedded software development, again, to try to stay on topic a little bit, I'm filtering these questions to, to do the best I can to, to honor the static versus dynamic topic. But um, as it pertains to embedded software, this can be another con, actually, of the development or of the dynamic tools because um, in the embedded environments, there oftentimes you can't instrument the code. Right? It's got to understand the instruction set for a particular type of of um, processor, and if it doesn't, then you're kind of out of luck, and uh, there aren't, there hasn't really necessarily been any strides in um, dynamic tools for you know simulators or whatnot. And I think what we see mostly at embedded shops are homegrown methodologies for doing this kind of instrumentation and watching what's going on. In terms of how the static analysis tools fit in the embedded software development, that's actually, and, and particularly how tightly is the tool tied to a particular compiler, it is a good point in that if you are trying to compile the code, you have to know how the native compiler is going to compile the code. And anybody who's written any C or C++ code uh, knows how different GCC can be from uh, you know, an embedded compiler like IAR or TI's Code Composer or you know, Visual Studio. They all have their quirks. They all have their bugs. They all have extensions to the language that they implement. Um, fortunately for us, we have what we like to call the world's most compatible front end. And uh, we license our front end technology from a company called EDG. And we've extended even further to um, make sure that we can compile the code just like a compiler would, regardless of what kind of compilers that you have. So we do have a supported compile list for which we know that, that it works well. And you can, of course, uh, see that on our, on our website. Um, again, looking for things that are, that are on topic. Uh, here's one that I'll answer in terms of generally static tools. Aside from memory leaks and pointers, what are other problems that Covarity's product solves or, or static analysis tool in general can solve? Um, I think 
As I mentioned before, you can dig into concurrency problems and seeing how, how the locking and unlocking works in your code. You can dig into security type issues. You can dig into um, uh, one thing we call fed code, which is logical fallacies in the code based on the decisions that are made. So if you have statements within functions that could never be executed because of a logical flaw, if you will, we can pull those things out because we're analyzing the source code. And let's see. Here's one question. Are there any dynamic and static tools for FreeBSD? Um, so I'm not sure on the dynamic side uh, where, where you know, the, the tools, what the tools availability are, but certainly our tool is supported on FreeBSD. So we'd be happy to show you how that works. And we're running up just around 11 o'clock. So I will take just uh, a couple of more questions. The next one is, how does Coverity detect code paths that do not free resources, e.g. a data packet? The data packet is meant to go out of scope and can process by another class. This goes back to what I mentioned earlier about the assumptions that had to be made have to be made by any particular static analysis solution. Um, one of the assumptions that we make when we see a pointer being passed into a function that we don't have the implementation for, maybe it gets queued up in some way and gets saved off into some global data structure. We will assume at that point that the pointer is taken care of. Our methodology is that static, anal static analysis is good for finding some types of problems and not good for finding other types of problems. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to sacrifice the false positive rate for just trying to you know, warn you every single time we can at the code. And that, makes, that means we make assumptions sometimes that it would lead to problems not being discovered in the code. Um, but that's OK, because you want the static analysis not to just warn you every time it thinks something might be wrong. You want it to warn you when it's pretty sure it has a concrete case for you and evidence behind what it's reporting. And that's where you can really get value, because it's much easier to diagnose what comes out of it. And you know, you know, developers wind up trusting the tool. Um, and then you have other methodologies for finding defects in other ways. You can use dynamic tools. You use your QA lab. Um, if you think that you know, a static analysis solution is going to be the be-all, end-all for catching bugs, well, then I've got a bridge for you to buy in New York. But um, it's, just not, it's just not the way it is. So that's, that's why we kind of err on the side of, of caution and making sure that when we report something, uh, it's a real defect. I think that that's the way the static analysis should be most properly leveraged. And um, one more question. Has a tool ever been used with Linux kernel modules? So our particular tool has been. And in fact, the heritage of the tool um, is from the days, our days at Stanford. And one of our first big test bases was uh, the Linux kernel. And uh, we, we analyzed the whole Linux kernel and all drivers and, and everything like that, and found lots and lots of defects. And, and that's, in some sense, how we got going with this technology and realized that we were starting to solve a lot of the problems that had previously gone unsolved in, from a static analysis standpoint. So we were analyze all this code, do it at a really low false positive rate, um, and, and, and scale very nicely. So that was uh, really how we got our start into this, into this realm of static analysis. So with that, um, I wish I had the chance to, to go through all of these questions and answer all of them. But I will uh, end it now. And I thank you very much for your attendance here today. And I hope you learned a thing or two about static and dynamic tools. Hopefully, we'll hear from you shortly if you want to try out ours. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Liz.